Hello, welcome to Siba Learning Zone. So come today we're talking about experimental techniques, criteria of purity. Now in a normal life, when we say something is pure, we're normally talking about cleanliness. But in chemistry, when we say something is pure, it has nothing to do with death or cleanliness. We're talking about a substance made up of only one type of atom or one type of molecule. So when you take our mineral water here, it is made up of water molecules, but there are other molecules added to this water. For instance, we can see fat, we can see sodium, we can see carbohydrates all in this water. So this water is not pure water. That does not mean the water is not clean. But in chemistry, when we talk about purity, we're talking about being made up of only one type of atom or one type of molecule. So pure water will only contain H2O molecules. But in this mineral water here, we have fat, we have sodium, we have carbohydrates all in there. And then we also have our vitamins in there. So this water cannot be considered pure water. Please take note, purity in chemistry does not mean cleanliness. Now, the presence of other molecules make a substance impure. So, these molecules are called impurities. Now, these molecules in the water here are making the water impure. Okay? So, all these are called impurities. And they affect the properties of the water. Pure substances have a sharper and definite boiling point. But substances with impurities have lower melting point and higher boiling point. When we decide to boil the mineral water, it may not boil at the 100 degrees Celsius that we know of. Okay, This pure water may not boil at 100 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 372, 373K. Okay? It may not boil at this temperature. Okay, So the greater the amount of impurities, the greater the change. That means when we add more impure substances to the water, the boiling point will go higher and then the molten point will go lower. Okay, So the greater the amount of impurities, the boiling point will change. Depending on the amount of impurities, the melting point will also change depending on the amount of impurities. Now, there is a way in which we can separate the constituents of a solvent okay now it is a method used to separate two or more solutes in a solvent now when we take ink the ink we use in writing the ink could be made up of two or more solutes okay we could mix two or more colors to get the exact color we are using to write and then we can separate this by using the method called chromatography in the chromatography, there are two phases. We have the stationary phase, which refers to the material on which separation takes place. Usually, um, filter paper. Okay, And then we have the mobile phase, which consists of the mixture we want to separate, dissolved in a solvent. Okay, So we have the stationary phase, which is the paper, the filter paper we are going to use in the separation. And then we have the mobile phase, which refers to the solvent. And then the mixture we want to separate. Now let's see how chromatography is done. First of all, we are going to put a spot over here. A spot of the solvent we wish to whose constituents we wish to separate. We put it, we put a drop in the middle, and then we allow that to dry. Now this is our filter paper. The whole thing here is our filter paper. And then we allow the solvent to dry. With time, we start dropping water on this one drop at a time. One drop at a time. So with time, we're going to see that the constituents will be separated. Clearly, you can see a blue, you can see yellow, you can see the violet here. And then there's this white color here. Now these constituents separate differently. Okay, The difference in solubility 
separate different pigments and that is what we call chromatography so the first thing we're going to do is we put a spot in the center so you, if you have ink at home you can try this you put a spot in the center and then you allow it to dry and then with time you keep dropping water one drop at a time and then with time you're going to see that this constituents are going to be separated now there's another type of chromatography called the ascending paper chromatography in the first one we saw is the radial chromatography it is radial due to the way the constituents are separated okay now when we go here to here we can find the radius mm -hmm. so it is radial now in the ascending paper chromatography the solution is spotted onto a strip of filter paper so over here we have our ink spot okay now the filter paper is suspended in a solvent with a spot just above the solvent surface so this is our water right here and then our ink spot is just above the surface of the water now the solvent rises up the filter paper and separates the solutes into larger spots so the water will rise as it is rising it will carry along the different constituents the different solutes and then you're going to see that they will be separated into different colors and that is ascending paper chromatography this can be used to separate the constituents of a solvent in a solution now let's calculate rf values there's something we call rf values now the rf is just a ratio rf it's just a ratio of the distance moved by solute. So let me say S for distance moved by solute divided by distance moved by solvent, SV. Mm. We are just calculating the distance moved by the solute divided by the distance moved by the solvent. So let's say the water here moved 4 centimeters. Okay. And then this blue, orange color here or the red one. The water, um, the ink just moves two centimeters. Our RF value is going to be two cm divided by four cm, which is going to give us zero point five. And then the cm's will cancel out, so our RF value has no unit. It is just a ratio. So that is our answer. RF value is equal to distance moved by the solvent. Or distance moved by the solute divided by distance moved by the solvent. I hope you get it. Now let's get on to the next page. Calculate the RF value of this for me. The water moved 5 cm. The blue ink moved 1 cm. So please calculate the RF value and tell me. Pause the video here and do this. Remember RF is just a ratio of distance moved by solvent or distance moved by solute divided by distance moved by solvent. So please pause the video here and do the calculation. Okay, welcome back. Let's see our answer. Now what is the distance moved by the solute? And that is one centimeter. So we're gonna have one cm divided by the distance moved by the sol solvent, which is 5 cm. Remember I said the cm's cancel out. So we now have 1 over 5. And then with our decimals, we know that 1 over 5 is equal to 0 0.2. And that is our RF value for this blue ink. We can also calculate the RF value for the yellow, the pink, the orange, and all the other colors. Okay. Now different solvents different solutes move different distances because their solubilities are different now this is interpreting chromatography and then the number of dots or rings is equal to the number of substances so how the number of dots we are going to see how many so, so dots we see will tell us the number of solvents over there okay then the second thing is the same substances travel the same distances. When two or more solutes travel the same distance, they are said to be the same. When we see two or more 
traveling the same distances they are the same in chromatography they are taken to be the same so had the orange and then the pink here travel the same distance had they overlapped that means they would have been the same substance and then we've got to see that the RF value is equal to distance moved by solute divided by distance moved by the solvent. Now, sometimes we may deal with colorless solvents, okay, or colorless solutions. Now, we use a locating agent on colorless substances to make them visible. Now, let's say we want to separate the constituents of a solution, and this solution is colorless. What are we going to do? After performing our chromatography, we dry the filter paper in an oven. Then we come and spray it with a locating agent. At this stage, the names of the locating agents are not so important. But we spray the, um, the chromatography, the chromatogram we have done with the locating agent. Then we heat it for 10 minutes in the oven. Once we bring it out, the locating agent is going to indicate whatever has taken place okay so this is just something you need to know first of all you perform the chromatography you get your chromatogram mm -hmm. the chromatogram is just something like the graph you create after performing the chromatography showing the constituents in the solution now you spray it with the locating agent you dry the chromatogram you spray it with the locating agent and then you dry again when you take it out you get your chromatography clearly visible now in summary pure substances are made up of only one type of atom or molecule the presence of other molecules make pure substances impure these molecules are called impurities the impurities affect or alter the properties of the pure substances by lowering the melting point and raising the boiling point so when you have water mixed with other substances when you decide to boil the water you are not going to get the boiling point of water to be 100 degrees Celsius. Two or more solutes in a solution can be separated by chromatography. The RF value is the ratio of the distance moved by the solute and distance moved by the solvent. So distance moved by solute on top, I normally used S, and then distance moved by the solvent at the bottom, SV, and that will give us our RF value. Locating agents are needed when dealing with colorless solutions in chromatography. And lastly, purity in chemistry does not mean clean. And impurity does not mean dead. That will be it for today. If you have any questions, please ask me. I'll be online. Have a nice day and keep studying hard. Bye.